Blessings and welcome to the Law of One. Now, how could one have a conversation with a higher intelligence who identifies itself as raw and not pretty quickly bring up pyramids? This I thought Don did in session two, but it was raw. In fact, who was the first to break that ice? Ra alluded to the pyramids as part of their program to aid the ancient Egyptians when Don asked Ra about their history. Two questions later, Don followed up with his first pyramid-related question. Don asked, You mentioned that the pyramids were an outgrowth of this. Could you explain a little bit on... Uh, were you responsible for the building of the pyramid and what was the purpose of the pyramid? And from there, the LL Research Group would unravel mysteries about the Great Pyramid and other pyramidical structures, which continue to befuddle Egyptianologists, historians, engineers, and other disciplines locked within the bounds of academic and orthodox thought. So now we will get into the actual reason and purpose and function of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Healing and Initiation Machine Purposes of Ancient Pyramids Depending on which pyramid and where, it may have been a 1. Place for initiation for those who wish to become purified or initiated channels for the Law of One. 2. Place of death and rebirth, resurrection. 3. A place to train healers. 4. A place to receive healing. 5. A place for meditation, rest, and feeling the presence of the One Creator. 6. Structure to help balance the planetary energy web. Focusing the Spirals The pyramid is a focusing arrangement for the centralization as well as the diffraction of the spiraling upward light energy as it is being used by the mind-body-spirit complex. The in-streaming upward spiraling light, or prana, is drawn and scooped in through the attraction of the pyramid shape through the bottom or base. The pyramid then becomes an intensifier of the all-present spiraling prana as it spirals upward in line with the apex. Similar to water emptying from a bathtub, but instead of gravity serving as the attractive force, the light is attracted by the electromagnetic fields engendered by the shape of the pyramid. Prana, or light, in its normal, all-present state is unregimented and not useful for work. Through the pyramid shape, the prana gains coherence of energetic direction. Zero Spiral The first configuration is a semi-spiral, scooped in through the base, similar to vortex of water passing through a funnel. In this stage, light is compressed and multiplied tremendously in its coherence and organization. First Spiral Beginning just below and centered on the Queen's Chamber position, the first full spiral is used for study, initiation, and healing. The angle of diffusion spreads 33 to 54 degrees depending on planetary rhythms. Second spiral. Located in the top third of the pyramid, the second spiral is used for building action at a distance. 
Example, metal bending, telekinesis, etc. are linked to the influence of the second spiral. This spiral focuses to the coherence of a laser beam at the apex and can be intelligently directed in the same way the entity who contacts intelligent energy through indigo ray may do. With the second spiral work may be done interdimensionally. Third spiral Beginning and radiating outward from the apex of the pyramid, the third spiral is used for energizing. That which is placed over a shape emitting the third spiral will receive shocks emitted at discrete intervals which are very, very close together, such that they energize electromagnetic fields. They are deleterious in overdose and should not be used over long. This spiral is likened to the candle flame. The Chambers There are three main chambers in the Great Pyramid. From top to bottom they are the King's Chamber, the Queen's Chamber, and the Resonating Chamber. The first two are the names that historians have given the chambers. Ra uses those names, but notes that such are not their names for these chambers. For the third chamber, underneath the pyramid, Ra is the only source of which we are aware who refers to this room as the resonating chamber. Typically, it is listed as the subterranean chamber. King's Chamber, Chamber of Healing Located at an offset position relative to the center of the first spiral, in this chamber the life energies are briefly interrupted by light. That is, the violet through red armoring or protective shell is automatically, mandatorily disrupted, but with the proper intention, configuration, and crystallization of the healer, safely done. The light then is configured into the seven distinctive color or energy vibratory rates. Crystallized and purified healers using crystals may manipulate auroral forces, the various energy centers, so that if the entity to be healed wills it, corrections may take place. Ra notes that a strongly crystallized entity is, in effect, a portable king's chamber position. In the diagram, the darkened rectangle is what's classically called the sarcophagus, though no evidence of burial has ever been discovered. When Don asked about the various small chambers above the king's chamber, Ra responded, the process by which the self is healed by interruption of the violet through red ray armoring involves bringing the entity to be healed to an equilibrium. This involves temperature, barometric pressure, and the electrical charged atmosphere. The first two requirements are controlled by the system of chimneys. Queen's Chamber, Chamber of Initiation and Resurrection Located just above and directly centered on the start of the first spiral, the Queen's Chamber intensifies the entity's will to call forth the inner light to match or attract the upward spiraling light. In this chamber, the initiate becomes one with centralized, purified, incoming light. The initiation of the Queen's Chamber has to do with the abandoning of self to such desire to know the Creator in full that the purified, in-streaming light is drawn in balanced fashion through all energy centers meeting in indigo and opening the gate to intelligent infinity. 
Thus, the entity experiences true life, or as your people call it, resurrection. Resonating Chamber Chamber of Death and Rebirth Located deeply beneath the foundation of the pyramid and accessible by a long, 300-foot descending passageway, this chamber provides total deprivation of sensory input so that the body may, in sense, be dead and another life begin. This chamber challenges an adept to face itself, thereby losing illusionary desires and gaining total service to others. It is powerful and quite dangerous. The so-called resonating chamber may be likened unto the symbology of the burial and resurrection of the body wherein the entity dies to self and through this confrontation of apparent loss and realization of essential gain is transmuted into a new and risen being. Just as a side note, this lowest chamber is no longer accessible to the public and has been blocked off due to tourists and others going down there and literally freaking out. Anyways, cautionary statements. Questioner, at this particular time in the evolution of our planet, it seems that you place little or no emphasis on the pyramid. Is this correct? I am Ra. This is correct. It is our honor duty to attempt to remove the distortions that the use of this shape has caused in the thinking of your peoples and the activities of some of your entities. We do not deny that such shapes are efficacious, nor do we withhold the general gist of this efficacy. However, we wish to offer our understanding, limited though it is, that, contrary to our naive beliefs, many thousands of your years ago, the optimum shape for initiation does not exist. Let us expand upon this point. When we were aided by six density entities during our own third density experiences, we, being less bellicose in the extreme, found this teaching to be of help. In our naivety, in third density, we had not developed the interrelationships of your barter or money system and power. We were, in fact, a more philosophical third density planet than your own, and our choices of polarity were much more centered about the, shall we say, understanding of sexual energy transfers and the appropriate relationships between self and other self. We spent a much larger portion of our space-time working with the unmanifested being. In this less complex atmosphere, it was quite instructive to have this learned teaching device. And we benefited without the distortions we found occurring among your peoples. We have recorded these differences meticulously in the great record of creation, that such naivety shall not be necessary again. At this space-time, we may best serve you, we believe, by stating that the pyramid for meditation along with other rounded and arched or pointed circular shapes, is of help to you. However, it is our observation that due to the complexity of influences upon the unmanifested being at this space-time nexus among your planetary peoples, it is best that the progress of the mind-body-spirit complex take place without, as you call them, training aids. Because when using a training aid, an entity then takes upon itself the law of responsibility for the quickened or increased rate of learn teaching. 
If this great understanding is not put into practice in the moment-by-moment -moment experience of the entity, then the usefulness of the training aid becomes negative. It is to be noted that these shapes are dangerous. We are quite pleased to have the opportunity to enlarge upon the subject of shapes such as the pyramid, for we wish, as part of our honor duty, to state that there are many wrong uses for these curved shapes, for with improper placement, improper intentions, or lack of the crystallized being functioning as channel for healing, the sensitive entity will be distorted more rather than less in some cases. We take this opportunity to pursue our honored duty as some of those creating the pyramid shape to note that it is in no way necessary to use the shape in order to achieve healings. For seniority of vibration has caused the vibratory complexes of the mind-body-spirit complexes to be healed to be less vulnerable to the trauma of the interrupted armoring. Furthermore, as we have said, the powerful effect of the pyramid with its mandatory disruption of the armoring, if used without the crystallized being, used with the wrong intention or in the wrong configuration, can result in further distortions of entities, which are perhaps the equal of some of your chemicals which cause disruptions in the energy fields in like manner. We found that your peoples are not distorted towards the desire for purity to a great enough extent to be given this powerful and potentially dangerous gift. We therefore would suggest it not be used for healing in the traditional, shall we say, King's Chamber configuration, which we naively gave to your peoples only to see its use grossly distorted and our teachings lost. We wish to point out once again that the time of the pyramids, as you would call it, is past. It is indeed a timeless structure. However, the streamings from the universe were at the time we attempted to aid this planet, those which required a certain understanding of purity. This understanding has, as the streamings revolve and all things evolve, changed to a more enlightened view of purity. Thus, there are those among your people at this time whose purity is already one with intelligent infinity. Without the use of structures, healer-patient can gain healing.